Why am I about to say this snarky biting comment that I'm going to wish back in a second? I'm going to say it probably because I'm afraid or I'm hungry or I'm tired. As parents, we all say things we don't mean to our kids, but when you have a child with ADHD, it becomes a whole lot easier and a lot more damaging when you say them. Stick around to hear some of the doozies. Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, an MDJD turned homeschooling mom of three kids ages seven, four, and two. My, my eldest has ADHD, and as a mom of a child with ADHD, I thought it would be helpful to share with other parents things that I've been learning, things that we're trying, things that have worked for us, and things that haven't, as well as just some stories about how we go through life when we have a child with ADHD, which is definitely not the norm, shall we say. One of the things I wanted to talk about today were the things you should really try hard not to say to a child with ADHD particularly because they tend to have a lack of emotional self-control and they mature later than other children of their same chronological age in this area of maintaining control over their emotions, of maintaining this connection between their higher brain functions and their lower brain functions. And so when we as parents lose control ourselves, which is entirely justified much of the time and unleash upon our children who have ADHD, it is received in a much more intensely negative fashion than it may be received by a neurotypical child. And that's something to hold on to. One thing I found that's super helpful when I lose control, and that happens frequently, um, one thing I've found helps me is to simply remind myself, you are feeling this angry. You are feeling this frustrated because you are afraid. This feeling, this intense feeling of rage of disappointment really is rooted in fear. Like I have a fear that he will not learn how to do whatever task it is that he just didn't do. That he will not learn how to do his morning routine on his own or his nighttime routine on his own. But, but when I have that fear, if I take that moment, that breath to be like this feeling of anger is coming from fear. And then I take a moment to self-soothe to tell myself, you know what, it's an unreasonable fear. This will come with time. He will not be a 30-year-old gentleman who cannot brush his teeth and get his clothes on and go to work on time. He will figure this out. We just have to be patient and hold their hand along the way until they're ready for that. When he's an adult, he will be able to put away his things because we will have practiced it every day so that it becomes a routine for him, so that it becomes easier for him. And I think taking a moment to quell your own fear, to quell your own discomfort and disquiet goes a long way in shutting your mouth before you say whatever hurtful thing you were going to say in your moment of panic and anger. Um, so some of the things that I think you should never say to your child are, and I pulled these from my own life, but also from the internet are you're stupid. Um, I really dislike the word stupid. I teach my kids not to use it and I basically reserve it for actually stupid things. Like when I see someone doing something incredibly dangerous, I might use that word, but I'm trying to cut it out from my vocabulary entirely because I find that my son especially takes the word to heart as a permanent characteristic as opposed to a, a description of a one particular behavior. So when we say words like you're blank and it's a negative word, they might take it as a very permanent imprint on who they are as people when really we're just angry and saying something because they've done something that might be stupid. So I think it's important to stop using words like you and paired with a negative word. Instead say, I, or I feel disappointed that this happened because that is honest. I feel disappointed that I told you to pick up your toys and you haven't picked them up yet. Can I help you do it now? Something like that, if you have to release that emotion. But again, if you take that moment to just breathe and feel where your negative emotion is coming from, it'll open yourself up to a lot more compassion for your kid. And having a handout and saying, can I help you with this, is really helpful. Saying if they haven't done a task, using a gerund instead of a command, like we're cleaning, 
is very helpful. Or just saying cleaning or brushing your teeth instead of saying brush your teeth or go clean is just a helpful way of giving them a reminder that's not so judgmental and negative. Um, another thing is that ADHD kids, I've heard apparently hear like a huge proportion more of negative comments during the day than neurotypical children, both from the outside world, for example, teachers and grandparents and friends and neighbors and, and everyone, including their parents. So at least you as their parent can diminish that a bit by giving them positive reinforcement and giving them praise. I know there's a lot of controversy nowadays about how much praise we should give our children. I think we can definitely go overboard with it, but I think giving them specific praises for behaviors can be very helpful, especially for an ADHD child. Find the opportunity to praise them. If they've made their bed, even if it's a little bit sloppy, say, you know, thanks so much for making your bed today, or you made your bed really well today. You know, you make your bed so much better now than when you were five. Something to show them that progress is happening, emphasize that growth mindset, show them that you're on their team. Um, one of the things I read recently about when you see negative behaviors, instead of saying things like, don't do that, you can make it an inclusive family thing where you say, that's not how we roll. You know, that's not how we do things. So that they know it's not just about them, it's all of us together. This is a rule for all of us. This is a behavioral expectation for all of us, not just them. Another thing not to say is, I love you, but... When we talk to them about a misbehavior or a reflection at the end of the day, the temptation to say, I love you, but it's really important that you learn how to clean up your room, or but it's really important that you learn how to sit still through your math lesson, or but it's really important that blah, blah, blah. Um, I think they stop listening after the but, and I think it totally negates the I love you because it's wrapped up in this admonishment. So another thing I'm trying to eliminate entirely, and I think I've pretty much succeeded with this one, so yay, um, it's been slow going, is I love you but. And a much better way to say it is I love you and. And and opens up your mind and your heart to all the other things you love about them. Um, and the praise you can give them right there. I love you and I think you've been doing such a great job recently playing with your sister nicely. Something like that. Another thing that drives me crazy, which I despise, is when people say to a ADHD child, why can't you be normal? Blah, blah. Why, why can't you be like your sister? And that is just, I mean, just a punch in the gut, right, to this kid's self-esteem. So try to avoid comparing them to other kids who legitimately might have an easier time following our rules and our regulations and our expectations for appropriate behavior. Why can't you is an answer that we already have. The answer is ADHD. They have diminished executive functioning. We already know the answer to this. When we ask why can't you be normal, why can't you be like your sister, we are really just being mean. And that's the truth because we already have the answer. We're just indulging in a little parental adult tantrum. We need to exhibit self-control for our kids who are having a harder time with it. We can't expect them to already know what it looks like. This is something that I've heard from friends and I've also seen on the internet. Um, when children with ADHD are on meds, and my son is not, um, so I don't really have this happen, there is a tendency to ask whether they took their meds or whether they're on meds or whether they had their meds today, all of which are incredibly rude for very obvious reasons. One, you don't know if the child is on medication. Two, you don't know anything about this family's experience. Three, I very much doubt that you have done as much research as this particular family on medication and whether you know at all their reasons for putting their child on medication or not. So step back, especially if you're not the parent, and if you are the parent and you're dealing with a teenager or something, definitely don't ask in that rude, judgy way to imply that their behavior is less than exemplary. Have you taken your meds today? It is rude on every single level and deeply, deeply unkind and insensitive to someone who is 
not neurotypical. Another thing that can really hurt the feelings of a child with ADHD is making fun of them or making a wisecrack about something they've said or a story they're relating with great intensity and enthusiasm um, because they might not think it's funny and they are telling you with all earnestness and joy and this probably applies to all children but like I said because ADHD children can be a little bit more emotionally volatile they take it to heart a little bit more so guard their heart take a breath before you respond to their enthusiasm with with hilarity or a joke because a lot of times all we have to say in response to these really enthusiastic silly absurd stories is uh-huh tell me more and what's that thingy over there on this Lego thing you built that's all you don't have to join them in their imaginary world you don't have to pretend you can literally just invite them with an open-ended question to tell you more Tell me more is a great way of indicating interest in what they're saying without ridiculing them and just really open yourself up to the story because I'm sure it's entertaining if ridiculous. So some people on the internet have written that people have told them, I'm so glad that my kid isn't like that. Or I feel so bad for you that you have to deal with this. Or other very, very holier than thou, um, comments that I find remarkable in their horribleness. So I'm pretty sure my viewers are not the types of people to be saying these things to other parents. But like I said, you know, before we say anything to the parents of a special needs child, think about what it must be like in their shoes. Think about what it's like in that child's shoes. And there is so much positivity that comes into their life because of these quirks. We all run on a spectrum. We are all weird in our own ways. Just because we've given a name to this particular brand of weirdness or that particular brand doesn't mean that we are excluded or perfect or anything. Neurotypical only goes so far, right? It's all shades of gray. So I think that if we all approach each other with compassion, these things won't happen. But on behalf of all normal, reasonable, kind people out there, I truly apologize that these horrible mean people exist. So for those people on the internet who complained about this, and there were quite a few, I mean, my heart hurts for you that that ever happened. And just to conclude this, I'll let you know, like I have messed up a thousand times, probably a million. I will mess up today, most likely. Um, I already messed up today a couple times, and I'm sure I have a few left in the rest of the hours for the day. But when you mess up, apologize. Let them know that you lost control. Use a lot of the same vocabulary you use when you talk to them about control and emotional control especially. Talk about your upstairs brain, your downstairs brain. Talk about your amygdala. Talk about how this is actually happening. I got upset because I was a little bit afraid that you would never learn to clean your room. But I know that's silly. You're gonna learn to clean your room. When I was seven, I didn't clean my room that well either. Make them feel loved. Make them feel like this isn't the biggest deal in the world. This isn't the end of the world. Because it isn't. And that's what I have to come back to. And I found it really helpful to just focus on that. Why am I so upset? Why am I about to say this snarky biting comment that I'm going to wish back in a second? I'm going to say it probably because I'm afraid, or I'm hungry, or I'm tired, and I need to address that need. Wanting to yell at our kids, wanting to scream and shout and have a tantrum isn't a horrible thing. It's a signal from our body saying we need to do something for ourselves, we need to soothe ourselves somehow. Um, I think that as a parent, having compassion for yourself and your own reactions goes a long way in making your child's lives easier. So as I've said before, I make all these mistakes a million times a day and it helps me to talk about them and to talk through them. I hope you in no way think I'm preaching to you because I am definitely right there in the midst of this and I'm trying to improve every day so that my son's relationship with his father and I can be better and so that he can feel more emotionally secure as he grows up into a fine young man. So. As always, thank you so much for watching this and I wish you the very best day. If you have any comments, don't forget to leave them down below and if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again.